finally figured out what was going on, but at the same time, yeah. it was like, oh boy, th this thing. Yeah, it's now, like, right? wow, that doesn't happen often. <laughs> yeah, because like the first time, it was scary because if you get an MRI, the, um, I want to say the lesions kind of look like cancerous. So the first year was kind of like, they thought it was like leukemia, so that was really scary. And that's when I was diagnosed with the osteomyelitis, but that's what they thought it was at first. But then the year later, they diagnosed me with the whole, the whole shebang. <laughs> I'll tell you, the first time around when we weren't sure what it was and how Emma alluded to the fact that some of these lesions look like leukemia, uh, that, was, that was really, really a, a tough spot to be in as a parent. The fear, it's tough. And then to, to dig down deep inside yourself as a parent and to begin to show that strength, you know, that, 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 that calm, cool, and collectedness for her. Um, well, that, that became, you know, a, a preeminent thing that we had to do. We had to really keep it together for her. It's not curable, but we have the infusions helped a lot with yeah. strengthening, strengthening my bones. It's called permidronate, and it's usually used for brittle, brittle bones disease to kind of just help strengthen. So, I mean, it's not like a cure, but it still helped a lot to strengthen mainly my spine. When they finally did some of that extra digging, way down on the Google list, and found, you know, <laughs> the, the CRMO diagnosis and saw that it really aligned with her diagnosis and symptoms, well, then it was, Okay, all right, now we know what we're talking about. Still a rare disease, yeah. still incurable, but okay, we have a peace of mind. And thankfully, we live in a day and age where there's uh, you know, good pharmaceuticals that are safe and effective that could manage it. And then coupled with the fact of just, you know, a good God and a loving family and great friends to provide that, you know, th those pillars of support it is a great example of how to how to punch through a hardship, whether it's CRMO or COVID nineteen. You know, so, yeah. What were the the treatments like uh, at Duke? How long were they? Um, how often? And just how kind of strenuous was that? Uh, very strenuous. <laughs> um, we would go once a month. Can't remember the months exactly which one, but they're in the spring, kind of winterish to the spring. Um, they would last about four hours with an IV infusion. So I just kind of sit there watching TV and eating snacks and stuff. But wow. yeah, and I wasn't a big fan of IVs back then. I mean, I still aren't. I still am not, so. <laughs> <laughs> I'd imagine so. I mean, that, yeah. <laughs> nobody can get you know, too comfortable, too used to that quite yeah. yet. Um, you mentioned the, the steps to work and you know, regain your strength and your speed. Just how hard was that? And what did that look like initially? Um, when I had my first like flare up, it was very hard because it was in my hip and it was just like, I just remember over, over there on the stairs trying to walk up the stairs and just had a complete meltdown because I couldn't even walk up the stairs. Mm -hmm. And I used to be the fastest on my team on, in any sport and I was the slowest and I couldn't even play anymore. So that was very upsetting. But thanks to physical therapy, I kind of got that mobility back. And then with my spine, luckily it wasn't as um, strenuous, I guess, but it was still pretty bad. But luckily with just the infusions and kind of just staying on medication, I've been able to kind of gain my, gain my speed back. I only had, I'm pretty sure, four infusions. And after then, I had an MRI of my spine. And then that, that's when they cleared me because it was gone. When you got that news, how big of a relief was that to, to say, oh, wow? So, oh, yeah. Some good news here, right? Yeah, yeah. Oh, I definitely cried. Yeah, it was at like a soccer game with like a bunch of homeschoolers. <laughs> but, um, and then I could finally get back to my soccer season. It was like almost the end. Like there was only like eight games left, but I could finish it up. So that was fun. Did your mind automatically click to, all right, I'm back to my soccer. I'm back to yeah. basketball. <laughs> yeah, because I was like, it's like I feel good. Like I want to do it. But then they were like, no, you can't even run because like I couldn't have both feet off the ground at any point. So I guess when you're running, your both feet are off the ground, so I couldn't even wow. run, so yeah. When it, is that mainly because of an instability issue they were worried about, or it just simply- Just because it was the spine, it was just because like, like just wow. to be like um, careful and cautious. Now, 
you come to this journey, you're, you're in your senior year, um, you have some very poignant points you brought out in, in your essay that your, your mom has shared with me. Um, mm -hmm. Just how, what are some of the lessons that you've come to learn, you know, over the past four or five years that, that everything is kind of taking shape here? That sports aren't everything. Because <laughs> before that, it was like, I was like, sports, like, a full focus on that. But it was kind of like a blessing and a curse, like, because I could just kind of lay back, spend time with friends and family, couldn't do all the things that I wanted to do, but, and then just kind of get closer to God, too, and I will. So. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You said the the desire to always give 110% was from the fact that I recognize each time I step out on the court, it might be my last. Yeah, exactly. I mean, just how surreal is that to be like, well, you know, other folks mm -hmm. thinking, hey, it's game two of the season, game three of the season. Yeah. You're like, this is this game. Be, yeah. Whatever. Yeah. You know? So I know how it feels. I was like, man, I was like, that was my last game, and I didn't even know it. So it's so I just kind of go in there with the mindset, like, play your hardest because this could be the last last game. Even if it wasn't related to my disease at all, if it was just like a, a sprained ankle or something, take me out the rest of the season, or a broken ankle, just like, just gotta play your game. That's your last. I can't imagine just just trying to fathom everything you know, physically you've been through, but how taxing was it just mentally? Uh, you know, going from that eighth grade year all the way to now, seeing where you're at, you know, on the court and in, in, in soccer field and such. It was very mentally exhausting because, <laughs> I mean, I am I was best friends with, like, all my teammates. And just kind of mm -hmm. watching them was, like, kind of, like, doing so good. It was, like, that bittersweet. They were like, oh, man, they're doing so good. But it was like, oh, I want to be out there. <laughs> so that was kind of exhausting. And then, like, I, um, my first flare-up, it was, like, I like couldn't even like move at all like just kind of it was in my hips and I just like my mobi mobility was just really bad because the physical therapy helped but just like not being able to do the things that we take for granted for. If you think about it right you if you cut yourself you can see it you can yeah. treat it you can cover it you if you stub your toe on the corner of the bed you yeah. know you can see it you can treat it these internal things where you can't see it and it's hard to pinpoint, but it's in a general area. Oh, those are scary. They really are. Those in, internal things, whether it's an internal organ issue, which really isn't her, but other people listening might suffer from organ issues. But for her, it was, it was, it was bone. It was musculoskeletal and um, you know joints, things that you would more than likely see with someone who's older, right? You know, osteoarthritis, you know, that's where, you know, that's, an, that's where old people get, you know, and after a long life. And, you know, so to see this being, you know, played out in a, in a young teenager, oh, yeah, that's, that's really troubling. And these flare-ups, you begin to, as a parent, and gosh, I mean, I, I'm a pharmacist by trade. M my wife is basically the family doctor. You know, she's the one who really researched this, researches this stuff, and and uh, you know, and so she begins to look these things up, and we begin to you know, try to find patterns, see if there's something that might trigger the flare-ups, and whether it's diet or whatever we're doing, um, try to pay attention to, try to avoid those things. But even so, it's still it's an auto-inflammatory disease. It's really, really hard to 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 uh, to, to predict, and when it does. Um, you know, sometimes these flare-ups can be really bad, and other times they can be not so bad. Yeah. In many ways, again, Emma is playing through pain a lot, a lot. But, you know, there's been some medications that, that she can take and, um, you know, that, that help you know, make it playable. Yeah. And, um, but, yeah, it's, this is something we're probably going to have to just watch for the, the rest of of her life for our lives while we're still around and you mentioned this whole ordeal of kind of giving you time to to kind of sit back and reflect and and lean on family and friends um where else did you go to i'm curious from even just a mental state just to stay i guess stable to stay happy to stay upbeat because your your attitude is is certainly <laughs> very vibrant and very positive considering everything you have been through what kept you through with through everything that you've been through Definitely my relationship with um, God, just like being able to rely on Him a lot. Because, um, I mean, all this stuff is just so worldly, and you just know that, like, just stay strong in your faith and everything will be okay. Yeah. So. And I think that's important, as you said, you know, 
everybody loves sports. Or some people love sports. Mm-hmm. They have a passion for sports. But you came to that realization sports isn't everything. Yeah. <laughs> but yet it's pulling you through this journey. And, and it's helping you kind of get back to yourself in a sense. Um, you feel you feel like, hey, this is kind of like old times. I'm, I'm kind of mm-hmm. I'm kind of back to me now. Yeah, it's like it's definitely like sports will always be a part of my life, and it's like, and I could use that in so many different ways to just help like everyone around me, like a teammate if they're if they're down, I can just like I can help them out. So it's definitely a good um, just like way of life, I guess. <laughs> yeah. What's been their reaction to to you and and how they received you, how they kind of interacted with you uh, throughout this whole time? All of my friends were very supportive. Um, of me during that terrible time <laughs> like there's pictures with all my friends came they came to visit me and stuff brought me gifts and they definitely helped me a lot to get back into the swing of things and so did like my coach and stuff I had very supportive coaches so they helped a lot that is awesome and, and I understand this could be a special season on the mm-hmm. court for you all as you as you perhaps gear up for for what could be a, a, a state title Hopefully. Quest. <laughs> yeah. uh, I don't want to put a jinx on it or anything like yeah. that, but what, in a in a symbolic way, what would that kind of show uh, about just everything you've you've overcome and yet you can conquer? Yeah. <laughs> no pun intended. Yeah. This <laughs> this title here, if you guys are able to pull it off. Yeah, I think it's just like it's a good testimony, like just like don't give up because like you you never know what could happen the next year, so. Yeah. Like, I was out for two basketball seasons, but I never would have expected, like, hey, we could probably be state champions, so. For her herself personally, just to say, hey, you know what, sports isn't that important, but it's it's helping me get through now, but now I also know it's not that important. Um, and I imagine that had to touch you as a father, as someone who, as you mentioned, you're, all your kids were, <laughs> were in sports, you're, you're involved in sports. I imagine that had to be touching for, for one of your own to, to come to that own realization. Well, absolutely. Ironically, her one older brother, senior year, great soccer player, uh, is tripped in a soccer game and breaks his collarbone. And his season, his senior season, is done. But through that, he discovered new talents in acting and singing, things we never knew. <laughs> her older sister, going into her senior year, several months before her, her senior year in soccer, really bad knee sprain, had to get the knee surgery. Everyone said she wasn't going to make it. She dug down deep, persevered, recovered, again, a good God, and she ended up making it. Uh, healing and getting on the, you know and, and, and getting on that team for her senior year and they won the state championships for the first year in a in a penalty kick and she was one of the kickers and and so one of those just maybe it just happens to our family more than maybe we got to keep learning I don't know what it but you know I, I guess you know it's just one of those I look at it this way that you know the Bible does describe that he gives us that all-sufficient grace mm. to rise up over the things that are challenging us. And, you know, when he gives us that all-sufficient grace, it's in a way he's, he's saying to you, saying to us, I count you worthy to endure this hardship because I want to show other people around you how good and great I am. Because the Bible describes that he shows his strength through our weakness. And so in her weakness and in my other children's weaknesses and even in mine, he has, he has shown strength. And it's been a good testimony, I believe, to other people and, um, and changes their lives. and makes them stop and think twice about what's really important. And it comes down to, to, to God and to family and, and uh, giving it your best. You're 110% in everything you do. So, and she mentioned that just how vital that is for her. And I always echo, echo those same sentiments. The, the result might not be the best, but the effort is going to be there 110% all the time, every time. When she stepped back on that court and got back to what she called a sense of normalcy, um, how, did, how different was it? Did it look different? And I imagine it felt different than perhaps before she went through all this because she came to all these new realizations, but yet... She stepped back out there, knowing these these new things, right? Well, you know, as a parent, 
and knowing what she is going through and what's plaguing her body at times, well, I mean, my wife and I will get a little nervous when she hits the ground or falls down or there's a little bit of excessive uh, contact. We get nervous, like, oh, please, get back up, stand up, you know. But, you know, we, there, there's still that sobering aspect and, 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 and pride in, in, in seeing her um, you know, rise up and, mm. and continue plugging along and maintain a good sportsman attitude. Uh, be a good mentor to some of the younger girls on the team, one that they can look up to. That, that, that definitely brings a great sense of, of parental pride and, uh, and, and joy. It really does. You're working hard to get back. You, you go through your freshman year, your sophomore year, and I imagine maybe in, in the middle of your junior year, we had this coronavirus pop yeah. up. Uh, what were your thoughts when, when that happened and, and just seeing the impact that it was having on our, our everyday lives? Yeah, that was that was crazy because I was like, oh, I feel so bad for the 2020 seniors. I never kind of clicked that, oh, I was going to be senior in a couple months and it would affect my whole senior year. Yeah. Luckily, with basketball, it didn't change much. With volleyball, it did. We, were, we did like a scrimmage season and then we're going to have an actual season with only a couple games in the spring. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, I guess... I don't even know where to go. Coronavirus. Oh my goodness. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Was did it kind of was it almost like a mental relapse? You were thinking, oh, this thing again because of mm -hmm. because you mentioned it was you, it went from a bit of fear that you had because of the the virus and its impact on folks with perhaps underlying conditions with other other yeah. you know health health concerns. Was what was that fear like? Knowing like we don't know what this thing is. We don't know what yeah. this virus. Is. Yeah, like for a second we're like, will it affect me at all? Because like my like immune system is kind of like not good <laughs> because yeah. that's what really affects my bones and stuff because like it thinks there's an infection and there isn't um so we were scared like if i was like a high risk luckily i don't think i am so hopefully i'm not <laughs> i'm not yeah. but yeah it was definitely a scary thing kind of just very unreal I, a part of me wants to say don't get me started on that <laughs> but no i just i'll tell you as a dad as a coach oh i was so frustrated because I'm like, oh, this is interfering with so many seniors out there besides her, so many others, and they're, they're never getting a chance to, to even have that parents' day, right? The last game of the season or, you know, all, all that has been, you know, you know stripped away. And, and the, there's that part of me that, that wells up and gets frustrated and like, oh, I can't believe it. And I got to tell you, uh, when I look to her, I... I, I learn lessons, even as her dad, in watching how she reacts to this. And I'm humbled, and I begin to realize, well, there's a lot of worse things going on. You know, she has a, a, a chronic, incurable disease. We've been to India a few times and seen human depravity there. And, um, and at the same time, you know, she's learning other talents and expanding that. And again, I, I learn a lot from just watching her you know, react through these things. And when COVID hit and she missed out on her junior year, which she more than likely would have had a really good banner year, like she did in the years before. Yeah, but you know what? You know, it's, it's times like this, you know, that we're very grateful and very thankful. And you know, if, you, if they take it all the way to the state championship and, and they win, yeah, that's, that's a great cherry on top of the Sunday, but if we don't get that cherry, it, it's still a Sunday. It's still really good. It's sweet, and it, and it, and it, you know, and it goes down good. It makes you smile, and it's, that's a good place to be. It really is. What kind of other things were you able to tap into uh, with this you know, time out, uh, so to yeah. speak, for sports? So I was out. I, it was right before I started the infusions, actually. I went over to, I went on a mission trip to India with my dad. And man, was that like an eye opener? Because <laughs> yeah. like you you feel such so much self pity. You're like, oh look at me, like I can't play the sport. You kind of and then you go to a third world country and you're like, wow, like these like women have to walk an hour to a river and back yeah. carrying big jugs. And I was like, oh. like their life is just so much harder. And that was like definitely opened my eyes. I was like, wow, like you need to be more grateful for what you have. So yeah. a little bit like, of humble pie there. Mm -hmm, yeah. And yeah. then I could bring it back home with me. And then I went again in 2020, right before Corona. <laughs> and yeah. I was able, yeah. like, I 
um, I told my friends like like a bunch of stories about India, and I was like, you guys should come with me. And so two of my best friends that are actually on my basketball team um, went and came to India with me in 2020. So oh, man. Yeah. those those trips to India, how did they? In a way, because you had no idea what was to happen after you you came back from those, mm-hmm. how did they kind of prepare you for what did eventually happen? Like, were you able to reflect on those those trips and say, "Hey, you know what? That was that was a lesson in going there. There was a lesson in, in going through that right there." Yeah, because the first time I went and came back, I had a flare up literally like a couple days later, and it was like the worst one yet. I was watching a basketball game for the Conquerors, just mm-hmm. a boys' game, and they had to take me out on a stretcher because I, it was in my spine. And I, I literally, I couldn't move at all. Whoa. So even though that was really rough, I was like, like, like you can get past this. Like, just like trust in the Lord and it will be, you'll be good. And, um, like you'll get past this. And, um, yeah. and then the second year came back a couple, like a month later, coronavirus breaks out and you're just like, still be grateful for what you have. Cause there's other people in other countries that are struggling way worse. Wow. Like luckily, like I have, I have a home to stay in, and like, yeah. like I have a bunch of resources that I could just have, and some people they just don't have that. You know, first of all, having six kids, we're very, very blessed. Uh, we're very blessed to have uh, a, a, the closeness that we have. Um, you know, three boys and three girls, maybe spaced apart <laughs> at the right amount. They, they were all, they all get along very well. And that's one neat thing that we try to cultivate in our family is that if, if one of us is struggling, you know, we're, we're, all, we're all coming around that one. You know, if you, if, you, if you injure your hand, the rest of the body is drawing its attention to help that hand. And so that's, that's what I got to see, uh, especially with, with her siblings, uh, a, a great deal of rallying and care and concern. And at the same time, a lot of the lessons that she gleaned personally about what's really important, um, well, that became very evident to them as well. So not only did it impact her friends, as she mentioned, her, the testimony that it brought, well, it was extremely impactful uh, to her siblings. And, and, you know, and it was really good to see. You know, you as a parent um, always hope to to see your, your children you know, grow to be good citizens of this country and, um, and, and, and godly men and women, and, and also to see them you know, react to difficulty and challenges and see how they can dig deep down inside and, and rise up. You know, and all of them were athletes, every one of them. And so I think you know, a lot of good examples. Uh, the Bible describes iron sharpens iron, and that's what we see a lot. They all sharpen each other. So it's really neat. Did you pick up any, you know, any new hobbies or anything that you were like, you know what, I like that right there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, uh, I took guitar lessons mm-hmm. for like years, and then um, I started just playing more guitar, and then I, and just recently, I guess like, I want to say like a year or two ago, I started like just writing songs too. So that's that was really that was fun, and then drawing. Nice. I like drawing. What do you hope for? Um, you know, come come the end of, of this high school career, what do you what do you have your sights set on? That's a good question. <laughs> I I'm keeping my options open. I'm kind of like my main one is kind of Liberty University. I just love I love that whole environment and stuff. Mm-hmm. But I'm keeping my options open. <laughs> or yeah, sports mm-hmm. in the plans, or are you using that as a metaphor for for the rest of your life, maybe. Mm-hmm. Metaphor. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I. When I was like middle school, I was like, yeah, I'm gonna play. I usually thought soccer in college, but I kind of was like, I think that's just too much for me at this point. Yeah, I'll yeah. Just do the little leagues or something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe coach it or you yeah. know, teach teach life lessons through it. Yeah. Right? We're always talking about, you know, so Emma, what what do you, what do you want to do when you grow up, right? When <laughs> what do you want to do in your life? And you know, it's she's so well rounded. Yeah. Just this this. Her, her athleticism, her, her music skills, her songwriting skills, goodness, her, her artistry, it, it, it does make you wonder, boy, what angle and what direction do you want to go? And I think for her, we, wanna, we continue to exercise patience as we 
as we watch her. We want to continue to advise her and encourage her as parents. But in many ways, I still think God is unfolding things to her in her life and where she needs to go, uh, where the next audience that she needs to perform for yeah. in, in just being Emma and, and in her life. So, boy, if she goes to Liberty, we'd be proud. If she wants to give a pause on that pursuit and, and go after something else, we'd be proud. Um, just like we are with all of our kids. We just want them to give 110% in everything they do. Everything. Relationships, school, sports, work, life. Yeah. It's, it's important.